Hello! If you've been watching our videos, you probably remember that we both got COVID in the middle of our big Scandinavian adventure. And instead of going to Paris and going to the Alps and visiting my brother in Hamburg, we spent nine unplanned days in a hotel room in Helsinki. I got COVID and then he got COVID. It disrupted our stay in Paris, it disrupted all our plans, and it cost an additional thousands of dollars. Fortunately, we had travel insurance and that reimbursed us for all those extra costs and gave us back the money that we lost for the things that we had to cancel. So before we talk about travel insurance and why you should probably get it, I'm gonna hand it over to Bob to talk to you about how we access foreign currency when we travel. Well, thanks. So we actually use a Fidelity debit card and many other people use Schwab debit cards to access cash. The primary reason we do that is that these cards don't have any foreign transaction fees and or, or they don't have any transaction fees and they reimburse you for the fee that you pay at the ATM that you access the cash from. You know, the, uh, what we do is we don't ever go to, uh, you know, banks before we leave, you know, or, uh, or, or the, the foreign exchange counters at the airport. First thing we do is we find a bank ATM, insert our Fidelity card, you know, and, and pull out some cash. So what kind of exchange rate do we get? We, we get the, the normal, we get the regular exchange rate that's on the market. There's no one taking out any excess fees, nice. uh, you know, from that or, or manipulating, manipulating that rate. So we get, you know, what, what pretty much what banks get. So, so do you carry your debit card around the whole time you're traveling? We do not carry our debit card around while we're traveling, you know, principally because we have heard instances of people's debit cards getting stolen and then being used at point of sale terminals, you know, where you don't have to enter your PIN and their account being emptied out. So we keep our, our, uh, our debit card in our room, only pull it out to go to the bank and then put it back in the room. Mm -hmm. The other thing we, we do with that account is that we keep very little money in that debit card account. With Fidelity, we've created a separate account for just our debit card. We go, we transfer a few hundred dollars before our trip, we put it into that account, and uh, then, then pull it out for on the trip, we need more money, we, trans we transfer more money, more money into that account. So again, if it gets lost or stolen or compromised, you know, we're not at risk for losing a lot of a lot of money. We sort of firewall it off from, from the rest of our accounts. So, like how much cash do you usually carry around then? So the other thing is that uh, we do for security reasons is we we carry very little cash. You know, probably maybe a hundred dollars each. Um, we carry cash that we are willing to lose. You know, so that if we do get robbed, we don't feel bad about it. If someone comes up to us, the first thing we do is we hand we hand we hand over what they want. When we walk around, we carry we usually carry one form of ID and only one credit card each. Everything else, you know, we, we strip down and go light so that if, again, if we are robbed, if we are, if we are pickpocketed, um, you know, we don't have a, a lot of things to, to worry about. The fact is that if we get that loan credit card stolen, the credit card company will overnight it to yes, wherever it, we are. Exactly, but, but usually we also have a, a backup credit card or two back in our hotel room yeah. so that we're not, you know, completely stranded. Uh, for with regards to money or or identification, but we don't even always need cash, do we? No. Uh, what we found in our, our recent trips is that uh, many countries are going pure cashless. Particularly on our Scandinavia trip, we were we were charging you know one dollar, two dollar, you know uh, items or or cups of coffee or or bottles of water, and it was it was the way it was the way of the country. It was mm -hmm. if we had given them cash. You know, they would have said, "No, no, we don't want your cash in, in some places." And it's really convenient. Su uh, super, yeah. It's, I it's, it. it's. I mean, all those places are tap and go, tap and go, tap and go. You know, not so much here in the United States, but you know, it's tap and go. Yeah. You know, the hardest part is figuring out where to tap. But <laughs> so, maybe you could talk a little bit about which credit cards we choose to use to to book our our trips sure. and to bring with us. Sure. So. Uh, yeah, that, that's another thing that we, we do with our travels. And uh, we actually have a, uh, a, a Chase Sapphire Reserve card. It costs us you know, a few hundred dollars, several hundred dollars a year for that card. 
But worth the, it. Worth every penny worth if every, you travel a lot. Worth every and penny. This is why. And this is why. <laughs> the, the first thing is is that uh, with that card, you you immediately get three hundred dollars travel credit. You know, meaning that you, know, you get our, the money our, back. Our first flight, you know, is you know is you get three hundred dollars off. Mm -hmm. um, the, the other thing with that card is that every four years we get a uh, hundred dollars off of TSA pre-check or global entry, which we which we use. Um, you know, so uh, that, you know, that that comes back to us. But my favorite thing about this card. <laughs> and what is your favorite thing, Lisa, about that card? Is that it gets us into all the priority pass lounges at all the major airports, and there are very few that don't have some sort of wonderful lounge, so that you don't have to go and sit with everyone at the gate the with the crowd and everything. <laughs> you can go into the lounge and relax. Sometimes they have business centers. Sometimes they have bars, kids' playgrounds, lounge chairs, food. Free booze, yeah, exactly. coffee usually, nice coffee machines, and to me, and, and it, plugs, it's, plugs, the most important thing. Plug, plugs, plugs, <laughs> plugs, plugs for my phones. Yes, so you get into many, many lounges. Yeah, yeah. and I mean, sometime we'll do a, a little video about which are the best lounges. For, yeah, exactly, exactly. And uh, you know, some of the other obscure things that come with that card, and let me just read them, read them off here because uh, you know they're pretty, ex they're pretty there. expensive. Yeah, uh, extensive. <clears throat> the other. <clears throat> The other thing about that card is no foreign transaction fees. You know, so you know you uh, you go, you charge something. You know, you're going to get the exchange rate that the bank gets, and uh, you know, so you're not going to get uh, anything off of that. You also get auto rental collision damage waiver up to seventy-five thousand dollars theft and collision if you rent the car for under thirty days. And we learned the hard way about that. Yeah. But. Uh, you know, we could have we we had a, a minor little incident with a bush, and <laughs> the bush attacked our car. Yeah, and on a pretty rough road, and uh, but unfortunately we had the car for more than 60 days, so they didn't reimburse us for uh, you know that minor damage. You get the trip delay reimbursement up to $500 for delays more than six hours. You get death and dismemberment up to one million dollars, which we hope not to ever. Exactly. Certainly, from. certainly the death doesn't do you any good, but you know maybe <laughs> your family members is good for. I don't good, think we want the dismemberment either. For a million dollars. <laughs> um, lost luggage reimbursement that's up to three thousand dollars per family member. Uh, baggage delay over six hours up to a hundred dollars per day for five days. Uh, emergency evacuation up to a hundred thousand dollars. So. We usually this is usually the card we use to book our, our flights, you know, not not just for the emergency evacuation, but for uh, you know for for some of this other stuff too. You know the lost luggage, uh, emergency medical or dental more than 100 miles from home up to 2,500 dollars, and trip cancellation interruption insurance up to 10,000 dollars per person, or 20,000 dollars per per family prepaid non-refundable. And that's on non-refundable travel expenses. So yeah. that's that that's it's a little slight, um, you know, difference on what we're going to talk about with our Allianz travel. Yeah. Um, you know, in, in in our certain in our case, you know, Allianz reimbursed some expenses that we had that this card would not have reimbursed. Yeah. Okay. So you know, back to travel insurance. When we were going into this big trip, it was our first big three-week trip, and we were going multiple places, we decided that we should try travel insurance. We took a look at Allianz because we'd had a couple small claims with our kids, and they had reimbursed us mm -hmm. very easily. And, and it, was, it was also soon after the big uh, you know, peak of, of COVID. It was, it right. was the first time yeah. you know, we were really traveling you know, uh, you know, extensively. The world was again. traveling yeah, again. Exactly, the world yeah. was traveling again. We were going to be on a tour with a lot of people. Lots of times when we travel, it's just us, and we can sort of control, you know, who we have interactions with. But right. now we were going to be stuck yeah. with some people. But you know, you know we also days. realized that we were going to be traveling a lot, and so instead of just getting insurance for this trip, we decided we should have insurance mm -hmm. that just covers us for everything all the time. Right. And so we saw that they offered something called an annual policy and that for people like us who like to travel once a month if we can or every couple months and sometimes really invest a bit of money in a big trip once or twice a year we decided it was worth it to uh, to get the annual plan yeah and, and we chose the ten thousand dollar limit and you can tell them yeah we chose ten thousand ten thousand dollar limit because you know our the the trip the the cost of our trip you know, was uh, you know was probably I don't know I can't I don't remember what it was, but it, it was, was, like it, was, it, was it was higher than the five thousand dollar limit. Yeah. You know, and we didn't know whether we were gonna get COVID before or during or or, or whatever. And we got uh, it during. And the, and the other thing 
that we why the other reason why we chose Alliance is that it had a very very specific and understandable COVID policy, yeah. which some of the other ones didn't. You know, they excluded pandemics and this and that. Yeah. But uh, so you know, read the fine print. Yeah, read when the fine print decision. on that. Because yeah. some of them don't don't cover don't cover uh, COVID. So why don't you tell them what all we got okay. for this policy? Sure. I know you have a list. I do have a list because I can't <laughs> remember. It, I can't remember because it it's all really detailed. You know, and, it, and, it, and it's interesting because some of the Allianz limits are higher and some of them are lower, you know, than uh, the, the chase limits. So, you know, if you do get into one of these, these situations, you need to take a look and see which one's going to reimburse you the most. But for Allianz, you know, our trip cancellation interruption policy, you know, and uh, it was $10,000 per policy per year. Not as generous as the Chase Sapphire, but it does have the epidemic coverage. Emergency medical, $50,000, much better than Chase. Emergency medical transport, $500,000, much better than Chase's $100,000. And if you've seen the way Bob travels, you would know that these are important things to have insurance for. Not true, not true. Just kidding, a little. <laughs> Lost luggage, $2,000, less than Chase. Baggage delay, $2,000 for delays more than 12 hours. Chase's limit is six hours with a $1,000 uh, per day up to five day limit. Rental car damage, $45,000, which is less than Chase's 75,000. Death and dismemberment, $50,000, much less than Chase's $1 million. So what happened to us in Helsinki? Well, I guess we it happened to us before we were in Helsinki. Yeah, I mean, I tested positive on day, uh, two days before the end of our Scandinavian tour. And, we, and so we left the tour and we quarantined in the hotel that our tour was putting us in um, for that last evening in Helsinki. Um, and then we couldn't leave because I didn't feel like I could leave. I didn't feel horrible, but we ended up in that hotel for 10 days because I was positive for five days. And then when I wasn't anymore, Bob was positive. The fifth day. Yeah, I, so, I tested. I tested every day. Or maybe it was the fourth I, day. I almost thought it was the COVID miracle that I wasn't going to get it. Yeah. So, you know, in the meantime, I was there <coughs> like that, canceling our trip to the Swiss Alps and canceling our trip to visit my brother and just some, like, some gave us some refunds and some did not. Yeah. Some gave least. us partial refunds. We eventually did get to Paris, but we only got to stay two nights instead of four. And, and we were able to fly home on our scheduled flight, but still. Yeah, it was a pretty complicated itinerary at that part, yeah. point. And um, you know, so when, when Lisa got COVID, one of the first things we did was we called Allianz. And said, hey, we got COVID. And uh, they said, okay. You know, and uh, you know, we, we thought that that was our notification to them that we were sick and we were interrupting our trip. Yeah. Um, you know, it was, it was not until later that, uh, you know, with what happened that we realized that if you do get sick during your trip, you need to go see a doctor so that you have formal written, you know, documentation on that. Which, of course, is a no-brainer when you think about it. Yeah, exactly. But, but the person at Allianz told me that I could take a picture of the positive COVID test with a date on a piece of paper next to it, and that would serve as evidence. Yeah. But no one else knew what she was talking about, so that wasn't true. So if you get sick, get to a doctor even if you don't speak the language of the country. Yeah, because it's reimbursed, emergency medical treatment. Yeah. So it was five days later, well, six or seven days later after I got COVID, after a couple of days, you know, my uh, my throat was uh, just uh, it was just horrendous. So we went and got went and saw a doctor. So I then had you know medical documentation that, that we were sick, which we then you know carried it uh, carried along. It was written in uh, yeah, Finnish. Finnish, but uh, you know, but but fortunately because our our medical coverage, I can't remember who covered it. Probably uh, Tricare, mm -hmm. probably Tricare. Tricare covered, reimbursed for reimbursed it. Reimbursed for it. We could have. Um, we could have made a claim with Allianz for that, but uh, we uh, we did we did try care there principally because I think the Allianz policy says that your that your primary insurance should cover it in Allianz's is secondary coverage. Yeah. You know, to to anything there. Um, but uh, but then what about getting the, the money though? Yeah. We, we, the, it, the bottom line up front though is that we eventually got the money. We did. And. Uh, but it was incredibly difficult and it was a multi-month process and I had to give them the same documentation over and over and I started to feel like Allianz just didn't want to pay us. But Bob feels that 
they just found it to be a really complicated claim. Um, but they ended up paying us, first they paid us a small amount that I found unacceptable. It was even less than we had paid for the insurance. And I had talked to many different people and kept going around in circles and I finally filed a claim with the Better Business Bureau in Virginia where they're based and they paid us like the next week. Yeah. So I think that filing the claim helped, but Bob would also tell you that it was just such a complicated thing and they couldn't figure it out even though I developed spreadsheets and explained it yeah. as clearly as I could. A three week trip with this kind of disruption was really complicated. But in the end... It was, it was, it was, it was multiple flights, you know, a train, you know, multiple... Lodging. Multiple lodging, you know, a, a train plus ticket. Plus those nine days. Yeah, plus the, uh, the nine days in, in the hotel. Yeah. Uh, you know, it was it was super, super complicated. You know, so, uh, you know, we've, we've been paid from them when it was been a single incident, you know, relatively quickly before. Yeah. You know, so, uh, you know, we, we did stick with it. Fortunately, they stuck with it with us, and yeah. uh, you know, to, to the point that uh, we we re up this year. Yeah. Now, not for the same limit. Our policy is a little lower because we didn't have a big, big trip, you know, planned. Yeah. But uh, you know, we're probably at the five thousand dollar limit this year. But yeah. You know, we we've been we've been happy with that. And I think it cost about nine hundred or a thousand dollars for a year yeah. to insure all of our trips. Yeah. And. Um, and I don't know if that's part of that is related to you know age. I mean, they look at different yeah, things. It could cost bunch, you bunch something different. Could cost, cost, cost exactly a yeah. lot. You know, a lot, a lot different. You know, and there are a lot of different companies to choose from. So you know, do your research. But in the end, um, we recommend that you get trip insurance if you travel, especially if you travel a lot. But for every trip, the amount that it costs is so small compared to the amount that your trip is, and the uh, peace of mind it gives you. It's worth it for that alone. Yeah, but if yeah. you need it, no, yeah, it's, it's nice to get your money back. You don't work so hard to go on vacation and then have it just all go away because of some sickness or fall or. Yeah. I mean, particularly when you have trips or... planned that are months in advance, and you know there's some unforeseen circumstances that can come up. Yeah. You know, and uh, again, read the fine print to see if your, your possible circumstances you know, would be covered under your know, particular policy. But uh, it always gave us a little peace of mind. You know, being being retired, we knew we were going to go on our trip unless you know we got sick or ill or, or, or whatever. So the the link to Alliance is below in the description of this video. So take a look, follow it, and uh, do some exploring. Yep. And, 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 and protect yourself. You know, again, not you know, not just with the travel insurance. You know, but with your debit card. You know, with your credit card, and uh, you know, make make it so that your trip is as stress-free as possible. That's right, you want your trip to be the adventure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so until next time, may your suitcase always be messy. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel, ring the bell to be notified of upcoming videos, and tell your friends about this video so that they also can go on great adventures being protected. Hasta la vista.